Well, I was raised with enough manners to know that I shouldn't be talking with my mouth full. But in my defense, if you were standing here next to this apple tree, I think your mouth would be full too. Today's show is all about apples, and we're in North Georgia and uh, in apple country, which um, I'm lucky to say is, is my home. I live not too far from, from this particular orchard, and uh, really going to show off today not only the different varieties of apples, but also different ways to use them. They're not just uh, for apple pies. There's all sorts of ways you can use an apple. And uh, Georgia's apple industry used to be huge. It used to be one of the biggest agricultural things in Georgia. And uh, as time's gone on, it's, it's dwindled down, but uh, I'm proud to say it's still alive and kicking and uh, great thing to come and visit. You know, I've been going to the apple orchards ever since I was uh, about five apples high, like a Smurf, and have always admired these little apple core things and always wanted one. So this year I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy one. So bought one, brought it home, really with the expectations that it wasn't going to work. But I have to, uh, I have to say that this thing is pretty cool. It, uh, it peels the apple in one long peel, and as it goes, it actually cores the apple and slices the apple. It makes a little bit of messy apple juice as well. Uh, but check this out. The whole thing comes out. And you've got this wonderful long spiral cut apple. I mean, I think that's just a really neat thing. And uh, obviously a little fragile thing there too, but this is gonna get cut up and broken up anyway into uh, a strudel that I'm gonna make. In fact, I've got some apples uh, behind me here. Let me take this thing out of the way. And it's got a little suction base, which may or may not cooperate with a nice long peel. Fun little toy. We've been eating a lot of apples since I, since I bought that thing. So we're gonna put together a little bit of a, a strudel, and this is kind of a, a cheater's strudel. The Germans uh, are probably gonna flinch when they see this because I'm using a, a ready-made puff pastry, and, and strudel is a long history of, of this very labor-intensive uh, dish, but we're gonna cheat a little bit, and I've got about uh, three apples, and today I'm using Jana Gold. And Jana Gold apples um, are kind of like Granny Smith's. They've got a nice tartness to them, a nice crunch. Uh, Granny Smith's come in season about the first week of October, and uh, so until the Granny Smiths come in, we're going to use these Johnny Golds. And I'm putting one shredded apple in there as well. And it's, they, uh, they turn a little bit of color when you shred them because they're oxidized. I put a little lemon juice in there to stop most of that. And we're going to spice this up with a few things. And one of the things I want to use is apple butter. I think apple butter is, uh, I don't know if the rest of the world really appreciates apple butter like we have it here in the South. It's, uh, it's dark and very kind of cinnamon. It's kind of a warm spice to it without actually being you know, spicy. So that's going to give a nice flavor to it, and we will use some pecans, why not? And of course you can substitute this for anything. Now traditionally, an apple strudel will have raisins in there, which is a great thing to have in the strudel, but I'm going to use prunes, or actually uh, the, the, the popular term now for prunes is dried plums. For whatever reason, the word prune has fallen out of, out of fashion. I don't know if, if too many people associate prunes with, with something other than eating, but dried plums, prunes, whatever, they're, they're fantastic, and they have a wonderful flavor to them. And uh, they're extremely moist, and they hold moisture well. And that's, as this bakes uh, in the puff pastry, it's going to be a little steam going on in there. And those dried uh, plums or prunes will, will kind of revive themselves, kind of rehydrate. So and with all of this, I'm going to put uh, some brown sugar. And, you know, just kind of eyeball this. It, it depends on kind of the sweetness of your apple, too. Um, if you have a really, really sweet apple that uh, doesn't need too much sugar, then, then don't put too much in there. And uh, traditionally, the flavors you put in with an apple pie work well in here. So things like cinnamon, allspice, uh, nutmeg, cardamom. And uh, I make a little cinnamon sugar mix that has cardamom and ginger and things in there. So I'll use a little bit of that for my spices. I always like to tinker around with, with spices in the kitchen. So, uh, but again, apple pie spice will work great in here. No, no problems whatsoever. So we'll give this a good stir. All right, let me get a, a better stirring implement here. Grab a spoon. And, you know, again, you could use pears in here. You could use uh, a lot of lemon juice or lemon zest. It's very customizable. Nothing, no real hard and fast rules here. It's all about the filling. In, uh, in Germany, sometimes they put a little sort of layer of like a sponge cake on the bottom of the strudel. But we're going to skip that just for, for quickness sake. We don't want to spend too much time on this. I'm, I'm not a baker by, by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm quite, uh, I don't know if lazy is the right word you want to use there, but uh, efficient when it comes to these dessert things. I don't want to spend all afternoon... Uh, working in the kitchen when we can just put these things in you know here we got five minutes worth of work and this would actually make two of these 
but we're just gonna make one for our purposes right now, but you have enough filling here for two, which would do, I don't know, maybe four, five, six people, depends on how hungry you are, but that looks really nice. And there, and we can make it pretty, pretty full. And those shredded apples have a lot, a lot of moisture in there. And so just a different texture. By having that in there, we're gonna get more of that apple flavor coming out rather than just these really hard, crunchy apples. All right, set that aside. Now all we're gonna do simply is just, just kind of tuck this over. Now the, this is a, a one sheet of puff pastry that I thought out and rolled just a little bit with, I couldn't find a rolling pin, so I used a wine bottle. Just kind of flatten it out a little bit. So not too thin. I just want to get it to where it's kind of pliable and stretchy and we can come back over the top. And I've got a little bit of beaten egg and milk here. And what you can do is take a brush, let me grab one of these here, and right on the seam, this will make it stick a little better. It's gonna make like an envelope. We'll put a little layer of moisture in there. And let's come back over. And you know, again, this is, this is kind of foolproof, uh, which it has to be since I'm, I'm doing it and, and I'm not much of a baker. So don't worry too much about you know, any, any sort of fancy thing happening here. So this is again, a little bit of milk, one beaten egg, and this is gonna kind of help it brown a little bit. So I'm gonna glaze this whole thing in there. We've already made a, a seal for our parcel. And this will go in the oven 400 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes. So I wanted to start this early while we put together the rest of our apple menu today. And I'm gonna make some, some slits in here. And that's gonna allow for some of that steam to come out. If you don't make those, it'll start to balloon and then it'll eventually crash back in. At least this way you kind of control a little bit some of the shape here. All right, that looks good. I've got it on parchment paper, not wax paper. If you have wax paper, that wax has a little uh, uh, like plasticky almost kind of feel to it and that'll melt. So this is just good old fashioned parchment paper. And let me get some of this stuff out of the way and we'll come straight into the oven. We're a small industry. Georgia's not ranked very large in the, in the world of apples. Uh, we probably produce uh, 0.0001% of the apples grown in the United States. Uh, so it is not a large industry, but we think it's a quality industry. In our, uh, with our cool nights and warm days here in North Georgia, we get a, a good variety of apples uh, with good flavors. We can grow a lot of varieties here in North Georgia. Probably uh, we can grow 30 to 40 varieties, and we do grow 30 to 40 varieties of apples. And uh, all of us are kind of together in all we do. We, uh, process a lot of things and work together in that in that hand trying to get it all together so we can move the most of our apples here in the North Georgia area.